This is the tallest building in the world right now. And here's the Jeddah Tower, the one supposed to take its place. A bold attempt by Saudi Arabia to construct the first man-made structure that rises over 1,000 meters into the sky, a full kilometer above the ground. But this isn't just another shiny skyscraper. It's a multi-billion dollar dream, engineered to defy hurricane force winds, desert heat, and push the limits of modern construction. The project started back in 2013, and for the first few years, it showed steady progress. But just as it gained traction and the tower started to rise, things took a turn. There's been an unprecedented anti-corruption purge with sweeping arrests of senior politicians and business leaders and members of the royal family. One of those under arrest, Prince Alwaleed bin Talal, Kingdom Holding CEO. However, with trillions of dollars at their disposal, Saudi Arabia soon resumed construction in late 2023. In this video, we'll show you the unbelievable story of the Jeddah Tower, how it was completely abandoned, and what Saudi Arabia is doing to revive it. This is Saudi Arabia's race to finish the tallest building on Earth. Before we get into the current progress of the Jeddah Tower, we need to know how it started in the first place, the early 2000s. This is when the Saudis looked to the coast of the Red Sea, just north of the historic city of Jeddah, and planned something massive, a futuristic district called Jeddah Economic City. We're talking 5.2 million square meters of urban design including residential zones, finance hubs, luxury resorts, hospitals, retail, and parks. The cost of this dream would be a whopping $20 billion. And right in the center of this mega project would be its crown jewel, the Jeddah Tower, a tall spear-like skyscraper designed to be the world's first kilometer high building. Not 830 meters, not 950 meters, but 1,000 meters. What's even more intriguing is that the tower's final height was never officially confirmed. While the public figure sits at 1,000 meters, some early interviews with the architect suggest it could go even higher, possibly closer to 1,600 meters. That's a mile into the sky. It would feature 168 floors of literally everything, a Four Seasons Hotel, offices, hundreds of luxury apartments, high-end shops, restaurants, and the tallest observation deck ever built, 600 plus meters above the Earth. With views stretching past the curvature of the horizon, this wasn't just architecture. It was the Arab way of making a statement. But how would you even build something this absurd? Like, building a kilometer sideways is easy. But imagine going one entire kilometer into the sky. That's never been done by any engineer or architect. It starts with the ground. The soil under Jeddah is not exactly ideal. It's a strange mix of limestone, sand, and coral rock. This would be like trying to build a skyscraper on a sponge cake. So engineers drilled 270 reinforced concrete piles, each more than 100 meters deep. That's deeper than most subway systems. On top of that, they poured a 5-meter-thick concrete mat, covering 7,500 square meters. Think of it as the world's toughest dinner plate, holding up the weight of 150,000 elephants. Then there's the shape. Jeddah Tower doesn't use the classic stacked look like the Burj Khalifa. Instead, it tapers smoothly, using a Y-shaped buttressed core. Imagine a tripod, strong, balanced, and wind-friendly. Each of the three wings anchors into a central core, distributing pressure evenly and resisting the wild lateral wind loads that come with that kind of height. Speaking of wind, this thing is designed to handle hurricane force gusts at its peak. Engineers used advanced CFD or computational fluid dynamics software and wind tunnel testing to model airflow from street level to the top. They tweaked angles, adjusted the skin, 
and even simulated how sandstorms would hit the tower's surface. The result was a sleek aerodynamic design that doesn't resist the wind but glides through it. And inside that sleek form is one of the most complex vertical transit systems ever built. The elevators. Because regular ones don't work here. At this height, steel cables snap under their own weight. So they're using Cone's Ultra Rope, which is a carbon fiber material that's seven times lighter than steel. Jeddah Tower will have 59 elevators, including five double-deck cars. Passengers switch at three sky lobbies, like vertical airport layovers. Elevators travel up to 10 meters per second and even generate energy on the way down. The building literally recycles gravity, and the engineering genius doesn't stop there. To build the core safely and efficiently, the team used a jump form construction system, which is a kind of self-climbing mold that moves with the tower. It speeds up construction and reduces risk, especially in high winds. But building this high in Jeddah would mean dealing with immense heat. So to stop the concrete from overheating and cracking in the desert heat, engineers mix in chilled water and sometimes even ice flakes while pouring to keep it cool as it sets. On the exterior, its sleek glass facade is engineered to reflect solar heat while its strategic orientation and the shadows cast by its own structure help keep the interior naturally cooler. High-altitude air intake systems pull in cooler, cleaner air, reducing the load on cooling systems. And let's not forget the sandstorms. Thousands of tiny particles whipping around at 100 kilometers per hour will destroy ordinary glass. So, the tower's outer layer is made from specially coated, abrasion-resistant materials and may even include robotic cleaning systems. Because you can't send someone up 100 meters with a wiper and bucket. But when everything seemed to be going Saudi's way, something happened that put a big pause on this project and the country's dreams. Back in 2017, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman launched a sweeping anti-corruption campaign. It led to the arrest of dozens of powerful figures, including Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, who is financing the tower, and Bakir bin Laden, chairman of the bin Laden Group, which was the firm building it. To put it clearly, the people running the show on the Jeddah Tower were arrested. Because of all this, funding vanished, contractors walked away, and the project started unraveling. Labor disputes followed, payments were missed, and just when things couldn't get any worse, the pandemic hit, and the whole site went silent. For nearly seven years, nothing moved on that site. But then, a comeback story started to take shape. In late 2023, a new chapter for the Jeddah Tower began. Saudi authorities reopened construction tenders inviting major engineering firms from China, South Korea, Europe, and local giants to submit fresh proposals. And by early 2025, construction had already resumed, this time with a renewed budget that could push the total cost to as much as 26 billion, far beyond the original 1.2 billion estimate. The new plan aimed to build one floor every four days, with eyes locked on a 2028 completion. But just as Saudi Arabia brought its giant back to life, another familiar player stepped into the ring. Dubai. The city that currently holds the crown with the Burj Khalifa wasn't going to surrender that title without a fight. Enter the Dubai Creek Tower a proposed megastructure that was conveniently unveiled right after Jeddah Tower, designed to reclaim the global height record. But as the Jeddah Tower faded from the spotlight, it was paused. The timing is too convenient. It's almost going to be like a face-off between the two giants of the Arab world, where height is the goal and global prestige is the trophy. But here's the catch. Dubai Creek Tower isn't technically a skyscraper. With less than 50% of its height being habitable, it would be classified as a structure, not a building. 
which means that if Jeddah Tower crosses that 1,000 meter mark, it still gets to keep the crown as the tallest building in human history. Jeddah Tower is a crucial part of a much larger dream that Saudi Arabia wants to realize. Jeddah Economic City is already taking shape, with roads paved, utilities in place, and a master plan that includes over 200 high-rises, three distinct districts, residential, commercial, and cultural, and even a full-scale reimagining of Al Balad, Jeddah's historic downtown area. At full scale, this city aims to create over 30,000 jobs. It's directly aligned with Vision 2030, which is Saudi Arabia's long-term plan to diversify its economy, invest in tourism, and elevate its global profile. So here we are, a tower that was supposed to change the world that failed, sat frozen for years, and it's now on the rise again. Jeddah Tower is a story about ambition, but it's also about resilience. It's a story of how far people are willing to go to leave a mark. Because when you build something this big, you're not just fighting wind and gravity. You're fighting time, politics, money, and even doubt. Will it finish by 2028? Maybe. Will it be the tallest in the world? Possibly. Is it already one of the most fascinating construction projects in history? Absolutely. So, what do you think? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.